What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about using Fusion 360 for woodworking. So this is gonna serve as kind of a basis for the other tutorials in this series. So this series is specifically gonna be designed for beginner woodworkers that haven't used Fusion 360 before. So it's gonna walk you through where everything is and how to use everything from a woodworker workers standpoint. So make sure that you click that subscribe button and stick around because I will be creating more videos in this series. I'll also make sure to leave the playlist link in the notes down below so that you can follow along the beginner playlist that I'm going to be creating. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I wanted to start off and do kind of an orientation for Fusion 360 and I will try not to spend too much time just on the layout itself but I think it's important that you know where everything is when you're working in this program. So when you first open up Fusion 360, it's going to look something like this. So um, it's basically going to have a couple of bars at the top and then some toolbars at the bottom and then some stuff off to the left and a little box off to the right. So this first bar is where you're going to be able to save and also manage your files. So if we click on this button right here for the little drop down, um, you can see how you can save different files, you can open different files, things like that. One thing to note about these files is they do get saved in the Autodesk cloud. So if you click on save, for example, and you click this little drop down, you can see how these are all going to get saved in the cloud from Autodesk. So there's not any additional charge to this or anything like that. And uh, the upside of this is you can access these wherever. So if you're ever on a different computer or something like that, um, you can find these files basically anywhere. So you're also going to have tabs in here for your open models. So if you have more than one open model, you may have multiple different tabs. Um, that information about your model is going to be contained right here, like the name. And then if you click on your name, and go under preferences, there's different preferences you can change for the way this looks. I don't wanna to get too far into this other than to say, depending on what level of precision you want, you're gonna adjust that inside of your preferences. So when you open up your preferences, if you need this to be more precise, um, then you're gonna have the option to do that right here. So under your unit and value display, this is gonna allow you to set your precision for how precise you can go inside of your model. So below the menu bar at the top, you're gonna to have a bar that basically contains your tools. This almost acts as a toolbox. It's where all of your 3D modeling tools are contained. If you're doing um, woodworking, for example, most of the tools that you're gonna use are going to be the ones contained inside of the solid section. So there are other toolbars in here. You're gonna work mostly in the solid section unless you start creating some kind of crazy surfaces or something like that. And notice that there are additional tools that you can access by clicking on these little buttons right here. You can see how they have a little arrow next to them. So there are other tools in here that are gonna affect the way that we can create different kinds of 3D models um, in this dropdown. And notice that when you mouse over each one of these, this gives you a little description of what each tool does. So if you're trying to use a tool and you're not 100% sure what it does, try mousing over it and this will give you a description of what that tool is going to do. And if you have any questions about these tools, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. So this is where you're going to access most of your modeling tools. Down below, you've got your browser on the left-hand side. That's going to contain information for all of the different things that are added inside of your model. So let's say, for example, that I created a simple box. And we'll come back to this in a second, so you don't need to know exactly how I did this. But let's say that I created a simple box and then extruded it up to create a 3D body. Now that body is going to show up inside of this list right here. So this is where you're going to be able to manage all of those different things. So that two dimensional sketch, you can see how I can turn things on and off by clicking on the little eye next to things over here. So you're going to be able to adjust visibilities and select different things as well. So you can see how, for example, if I click on this body, 
it gets selected in my model over here. So your browser is really useful for keeping everything organized. This is also where your units are going to be stored for your open program. So in your document settings, you can see how there's these little arrows here and if you click on them, um, they pop down a little option box. But for this, this is where you can manage your units. So if you wanted this to be in millimeters rather than inches, you could click on this button right here and this is gonna pop up a little box for changing your active units. So if you ever do wanna change your units, this is how you're going to do that. Note that there's also an option in here to set this as a default. So if you set this as a default, that means that in the future, future programs would be set to inches as the default when you first open them up. So that's the browser. On the right hand side is the navigation box. And so the navigation box allows you to navigate around inside of your model. And so it allows you to do this in a couple different ways. So the first is you can just click on any of the faces of this box or also the corners and the edges. And you can see how when you click on these, this is rotating your object around based on where you click. So if you single click on this box, then this is going to orient to different, um, different views. You can also click and hold or click and drag on this box and you can see how this pivots around inside of your model. So, and one thing that's gonna be really important, especially for beginners, is remembering that this home button is here. So the home button is really useful in case you ever get all turned around in your model. If you click on home, this is gonna take you back to your default view that just kinda of shows everything. So if you ever get like lost in a model or you can't get this to orient properly, everything gets upside down or something like that, just try clicking on this home button in order to get back to this. And one thing I will point out is you're going to do a lot more navigation using your mouse. And so one note about using a mouse for 3D modeling is it's really a good idea to use a mouse that has a scroll wheel. And the reason for that, and you can kind of see this here, is if I scroll down or up in this model, and actually by default it's the other way around, but by scrolling your mouse wheel you can zoom in and out on different points. So notice how when I put my mouse over a point and I scroll my mouse wheel up, this is zooming in on that point. The same thing if I put my mouse over here and I roll my mouse out, you can see how this is zooming out using that as a base point. So you're going to use that center mouse wheel to zoom in and out a lot. So you're also able to click and hold that button down and you can see how that's gonna pan your view. So that's gonna move your view left, right, up or down as long as you hold that. You can also use modifier keys on your keyboard. So if I hold the shift key down and then click and drag my middle mouse button, so I'm holding that middle mouse wheel down and it clicks like a button. Um, when you hold that down, you can use this to orbit. So if you hold the shift key and hold the middle mouse button down, you can orbit around as well. And so by combining all of those, navigation inside of your models gets really easy. And so then at the bottom, you have a couple different toolbars. You have one where you can actually adjust your camera views. Um, so all of those pan tools and other things can also be located down here. Like I can activate this orbit tool and then click and drag my left mouse button by doing this. I don't recommend doing that a lot because it's a lot slower, but it is in there as an option. So, and then you also have tools in here that affect how everything is displayed. And I don't wanna to get too far into that right now, but you can see how you can like change your environment and make things look different. So um, you can also set your grid and your snaps. So how precise your grid is when you're modeling in here. And then at the bottom, you also have a toolbar that acts as a timeline. And so your timeline is going to allow you to go back and forth in time inside of your model. So like for example, if I wanted to, I could revert back to the time before I created this 3D box using the timeline. And this is gonna be extremely valuable if you decide that you wanna make any kind of changes. So you can take things that you've done before, like this sketch, and if I edit this sketch, so let's say I was to take this edge and move it over. We'll say another two inches or something like that and click finish sketch. You can see how this 3D box that we created actually adjusts based on that change that I made. So I can go back and change things that happened before and those changes will echo across your model. So this makes making changes really interesting and really easy inside of this program. 
So now you've got a pretty good idea of how to navigate around and where everything's located inside of Fusion 360. Let's talk about how we're going to create three-dimensional objects in the program. So in Fusion 360, a lot of what you do is going to be basically creating a two-dimensional sketch and then using these tools in order to create a three-dimensional object from that sketch. So we do a lot of modeling out different profiles. So a profile is going to be a two-dimensional shape that we're then going to create in 3D or use to create a 3D model. And so for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this body. So I'm just going to right click on this. And I'm going to remove it because it's kind of in the way for what we want to do right now. Um, but so let's say, for example, let's start with a simple example. So let's say that we wanted to create just an extruded piece of wood that has a certain length to it. Let's say 24 inches or something like that. Well, the way that we would do that is we would start by creating a sketch. And so if you click on this button for create sketch, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to create a two dimensional profile of what that board looks like. So, and you can see how when you first click on this, this pops up some different boxes. So this is Fusion 360 basically asking you what axis or plane you wanna draw along. So it's using this to say, okay, if we were to click on this plane, for example, then we would start drawing basically in the space that's made up between the green and the blue. So if you wanted something to be flat, you would click on this plane right here. And notice how your grid is kind of moving to show you what that would look like if you were to set that as a plane. But in this case, we're just gonna click on this face and you can see how this orients itself so that we're in a good position to model in two dimensions. So it's just kind of a straight up and down view. And so in order to keep this simple, let's just use the line tool in order to create a profile. So this tool just allows you to draw lines inside of Fusion 360. So if we click on it, you can see how what that does is that changes my cursor um, so that I've got a little crosshair on it. And I've also got a little indicator showing me the icon for the line tool. So that's showing me that the line tool is active. And notice that right now, this is kind of locking to these little points where the grid intersects. So this is basically what's known as inferencing and it's Fusion 360 guessing where you want your mouse to go and where you may wanna click. So you can adjust the grid settings. So you can set this so that the grid is at a certain dimension if you want to. Um, you can also turn that snapping off. But in this case, um, it's helpful because it helps me pick certain points. So let's say that we have a 12 inch piece of wood this way. And notice that when I single click and then I move my mouse, and by the way, we, we don't like to click and drag when we're using tools in Fusion 360. We like to activate the tool and then single click to set your first point and then move your mouse around like this. So you're not clicking and dragging, you're just single clicking to set your base point. And then notice that this is showing you the dimension of the line that you have in here. So you can either single click again to set this point or you can also type in a value so if i wanted this to be one inch you can see how the little value inside the box is blue well if i type in a value of one inch and hit the enter key what that's going to do is that's going to automatically make this line it's going to constrain this line so that it's a one inch and so let's say that we were to just keep this very simple so let's say we wanted this to be three eighths of an inch thick. So what I would do um, in order to give this that thickness is I would just type in three and then the little divided by or the slash and then eight and hit the enter key. And you can see how what that did is that came in here and that basically did the math and figured out that this would be 0.375. And this is gonna be too wide. Let's make this a little more narrow. So in this case, let's type in a value of maybe a quarter inch. So whoops, so 0.25 we'll hit the enter key. So all I want to do is I want to use the line tool to just draw lines until we've closed this in. So you can see how when I close this in, I get this little blue shading inside of this shape. Well, the reason I have the blue shading inside of this shape is this is basically showing us that this is closed in and we can now use it to extrude an object. So for now, what we want to do is we want to click on finish sketch. So we've sketched out the shape that we want and we're done with that. Now we want to go back into 3D mode. Well, now that we have this sketch, we can activate this tool called extrude. 
and we can give this shape depth. So, and notice when I activated this tool, I get a number of different inputs on the right hand side of the page. So these can be really helpful for figuring out exactly what you want a tool to do. In this case, what the extrude tool does is it wants me to select a two dimensional profile, which I've done. So we've clicked on this face. And if forever, for whatever reason this doesn't work, you can click the little X, click on select, and then click on this face. But then we can extrude this by either clicking and dragging or typing in a value. So let's say, for example, that I wanted this to have a length of six inches. I can type in a value of six inches, or I can drag this until it goes to six inches. So you can kind of have that go however you want. A lot of the time, if you're trying to be precise, typing in a value is going to be easier. But then when I'm done, I'm just going to click OK. So when I click OK, what this has done is this has extruded this two-dimensional profile along this length. And so one of the cool things about these tools is not only can you use them to add material, you can also use them to remove material. And by the way, we'll go a little further into how we would use this to create an actual practical sh shape in future videos. But in this situation, let's say I wanted to cut a little notch in this face. Well, we could just create a sketch and in this situation, notice that I can mouse over this face and use that as my plane to draw along. So we can just click on this face and then let's just draw out the profile of a notch. So we'll just do 0.15. So you can see how what I've done is I've drawn a profile along this face. Now I'm gonna click on finish sketch and you can see how now if I mouse over this, this face has been split because I drew another sketch on top of here. Well now we can use the extrude tool and select this as our profile. And notice how this turns red now when I do this. So the reason this turns red is because this program figures out, okay, you've drawn a second shape that's intersecting with the first shape. You probably wanna use this to remove material. And so what it did is it turned our operation to cut. And so what cut does is cut will remove material from an object wherever they intersect. So this will remove material from an object wherever this profile is intersecting with the three dimensional object. And if you don't want it to do this, if you wanted to do something else, there's options for like intersect or join these into a single object, other things like that. But in this situation, we want to do a cut and we're just going to click on okay. Well, now you can see how what that did is that removed material from this face. And so this is going to be the basis for which we're going to create most of our objects inside of Fusion 360. So let's say for example that we created another object. We would create a 2D sketch and I'm just going to draw a box and in this case I'm going to use one of these modify tools. So this one is going to be the fillet tool. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to click on a corner in order to kind of fillet this out and make it a curved edge. And you don't need to remember this for right now. We'll talk more about modifications in the future, but I'm just going to finish the sketch here. I'm going to click on home to get back to my 3D view. And then I can use this to extrude this profile out into a three dimensional shape as well. So, and then finally, you can also use this to cut holes. So for example, if you wanted to cut a hole in this face, you could just add a new sketch and you could just draw a circle. And I know it's not perfectly centered or anything like that, but we can go ahead and we can click finish sketch. And then we could use that same function with the extrude tool in order to cut a hole in our object. So if I click okay and then I rotate down you can see how this cuts a hole all the way through this object, so now we have this shape in 3D. So this would also, and there's other tools for this as well, but you could also use this to like bevel an edge. So if you wanted to come in here and take a bevel off of this edge, first of all, there's a better tool in here, um, which is called the, uh, the chamfer tool, but this is more a demonstration of the way that the removal of materials work. But you can see how if I draw this little profile on this face using a sketch, and then I use the extrude tool, you could use this to remove material along this face.
So that's kind of a beginner overview of how you can create shapes inside of Fusion 360. In the next video, I want to talk a little bit more about those two-dimensional profiles and how you can use them to create more accurate shapes for woodworking. So make sure to check out that link down below. I will be adding videos to this playlist as I go. So make sure you tune in for that video as well. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.